We love him in present tense because he first loved us in past tense. He has loved us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you're tuning into this channel, one pass. I want to welcome you to week 42 of 2024, still in the month of October. And today, I am so glad. Of course, the good news always, you know, wears out joy instead of force because already flowing in everyone again, Christian, is the river of living water. So today, talking about the good news, most especially from one of my favorite authors of the scripture, John the Beloved. I am excited, and today we'll be doing a very familiar verse in this realm as a Christian. This verse is very familiar, and so let me use this medium to thank you, especially for always joining us on this journey. And remember, end of the month is coming, October. It will be a special month to every one of us here when we do our basis review on the last day of the month by 12 noon Texas time. So let's dive into today's episode. The verse of this week, 42, will be taken from 1 John chapter 4 verse 19 we love him because he first loved us come with our hearts in prayer father we thank you i exalt you this moment oh lord god king of glory love is you and you are the author of love speak oh lord god king of glory through my vessel, that whosoever come in contact of this video, Lord God, King of glory, the love of God will be rekindled again in their life. Thank you, Abba Father, in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, today we'll be talking about First John chapter 4, verse 19. We love him because he first loved us so let's quickly talk about the origin of love i have always shared with brethren that the only thing that distinguish you to be a born again christian a believer is the ability to live the god kind of life and when we say the God kind of life, it's not only calling things that we are not to be in existence. It also showcases the character of God. There is no way we can speak about the God kind of life without talking about love. God is the origin of love. And if you have the ability to love at all, it is because you are created in the image of God. And most interestingly, for we Christians, because the life we are living is not the life that belongs to us, we are living a borrowed life. Borrow might be a little understatement. We are living a purchased life. The life we are living is not ours. If you are really a Christian, the only thing that makes you to be a Christian is the kind of life you are living. Because if you are Christian, it will not be long. People will not pass through analysis to figure out that you are a Christian. Why? 
because you will be living the Christ kind of life. You will be living the Jesus kind of life. And this is not something you learn. This is something that, you know, automatically, you know, yield out of you. Because when you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit take over your life and begin to help you to live the God kind of life. And when we say the origin of love cannot be, you know, talked about without mentioning God, it simply means that the Bible recorded that man was created because of the love of God. God has created beings with splendor, talking about love. God is the author of love. He has created things that, of course, if we want to consider greatness, splendor, mysterious, we can look around us and see things. Look at angels. Only one angel defeated and killed 85,000 soldiers. And soldiers. What a mighty display of power. But love compelled God to create a man in his own image. So God become flesh. And God was hidden in a treasure. A treasure that is mortal. That is man for you. So it takes God everything to send his only begotten son to come and redeem that most expensive creation. Yes. He has created. Jesus put it this way. He said, What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lost his soul? That simply means that put the whole world together. One single human being is worth more than the whole world. And that is why we say that you cannot love without God. Because ordinary human sense without God can even kill human beings for dog, for pets. I saw one pathetic video that a whether homeless dog was trying to, you know, bite somebody and the guy happens to kick this dog and people stop their car and beat this guy like he stole something that they prefer the dog to a full grown man. Of course, you know that that can be sponsored from the pit of hell. A creation that God spent his only begotten son to come and lie with. So, brethren, love originated from, from God. So today, if we stand as a Christian, as a believer, to love, it is because of the impact of the love of God that has taken over our hearts. And that is why when you see people say they are Christians, but they cannot forgive, they don't have place for tolerance. No, that, 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 is not, that is not the Christ we preach about. There is no amount of sin or wrong or offense that you cannot forgive. If man can do all these things and God will still forgive man and send his only begotten son to come and die for man, I don't think that there is anything in life that we cannot forgive. So, any amount of love we show others or we, we, we are portioned to God is as a result of the impact of the love of God in our life. He first loved us. He first loved us. That's how the Bible says it. We love him in present tense. 
because he first loved us in past tense. He has loved us. The Bible said that the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. So whatsoever we are benefiting, whatsoever we are manifesting, God did not just allow us to manifest those things or give us those things just because we love him. It's because he has loved us. The amount of love we may have for God is the propensity of our yieldedness to accept his love. So, paraventure, put it in perspective, if you are in relationship, you will be conformed to whatsoever your partner is to the degree of your acceptance of what those norms are. If you're in a relationship with somebody and you don't love the person, you barely can, you know, act like the person. Both of you can conform to each other as a result of the apportioning of love and acceptance that you give to each other's behavior. So we cannot take credit for loving people because we can love people to the extent we allow the love of God to consume us. Brethren, this is a profound statement that John the Beloved is unveiling to us, that we love him, we love God, we love people, because God first loved us. He first loved us. So brethren, let's try in our possible best to allow the love of God to take over us. When we allow the love of God to actually rest in our heart, then we can love like God. Then we can love like Jesus. Look at almost all the healings of Jesus according to the scripture. It was as a result of the compassion he had on those people. So, do this little test by evaluating your tolerance level to mankind. By evaluating how you love people. By evaluating how you tolerate people. By evaluating how you can be able to go along with people, irrespective of the fact that you are not the one leading. Because it is very easy when we are the one that is issuing the command to, to, to be at peace with people. When it turns around that we are taking the command from people, we become rebellious. It is not done in our own way. So it doesn't make sense to us. So brethren, please, at this new season, let's dive into the practicality of the love of God that we can really, truly show compassion to people. Let's make this brief as we bow our hearts in prayer. Father, I ask that Lord God, King of glory, Father, that you will help us, help us to love you, help us to love you with the whole of our heart, help us to love you because you are the origin of love and truly help us to accept your pattern of love because your pattern of love is the most expensive kind of love. Love that will help make us to let go our rights. Thank you, Abba Father, because I know you will do more than we ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Remember, it's always 3 p.m. Monday, Texas time. And remember, the last day of the month, 12 noon, we come together live for one hour and share fellowship together. God bless you. Until I meet you again, I remain your brother, Pastor Andrew Feinborn. Shalom.